Uh, new character coming up next. Holy moly! <laughs> um, out comes Johnny Be Bad with the Ebony Einstein Theodore R. Long. That mm. is very much a one-time used yep, billing. Yeah, discarded that one. Um, uh, out comes Mark Mero, and uh, what he was, he was an Italian-American wrestler. He'd had a tryout with WCW, I think, a couple of months beforehand, where Dusty Rhodes had watched him having a match against another guy who'd be signed up called Van Hammer. And he watched Mark Mero, and big thing was he sort of went, then what I tell you, you looked just like little Richard and Mark Merrow said uh, no not really and off went Dusty to create Johnny B. Bad yeah um, Johnny B. Bad is, is Little Richard the wrestler mm. worth saying Johnny B. Bad is not a Little Richard song it was a song by Chuck Berry <laughs> they it, yeah. could not find a Little Richard song no that was also a man's name <laughs> uh, he is billed from Macon in Georgia which was Little Richard's hometown so right. someone did manage to get like an autobiography of Little mm. Richard and you know tick some of the bits off it, I mean it's blackface but I mean, technically I guess but yeah uh, but... It, it's a strange one with Mark Merrow in that I think you know throughout his career he was presumed to be African American right Right. But he is Italian American, mm, yeah. um, so it, it is questionable. Right. Well, they would be things that you would say now. No, we we can't just have yeah, you yeah, yeah, pretending yeah, to yeah, be yeah. a gay black pioneer mm. when you are not gay and you are not black. Listen, look, if you're gonna slag off wrestling at this point of view, go on to Stars in Your Eyes and see what they were doing over there, because right? <laughs> yes. they will be doing some terrible things. There's a little line here that Johnny B. Bad says, uh, and he, he would become a very good talker. Mm. At this point, he just looks like Little Richard. What no one knew is that he is would... Is that Peter would Donaldson be- was watching this on a train. <laughs> <Were you? laughs> and I made the window very small. <laughs> Well, what no one knew is he would actually take a gimmick, which I think in most people's hands would have been a kiss of death. A lot of people, that would have been the last thing you ever did in wrestling. And he managed to adapt the character as it went on because he he was good in the ring. He was really good. And certainly his late WCW period, about 94, 95, prior to going to the WWE, he was absolutely dynamite in the ring. Yeah. Um, There's a line here, again, where I watched it and it just meant nothing to me, really, where Johnny B. Bad just uh, says, let me say one thing. I'm so pretty, I should have been born a little girl. And don't you put your hand on it, neither. You watch what you're doing. Don't touch him, all right? Let me say one thing. I'm so pretty, I should have been born a little girl. But Jenny, tell him why you ain't so pretty, baby, why you wasn't born a little girl. Oh, hush, Jenny. You know, I'm a bad man. I'm a bad man. <laughs> Now, that line just goes out, and I didn't even, you know, you just, oh, that's fine. But I know that even 20 years later, there was an interview with Tony Schiavone where he was like, I felt that line just went much too far. Really? It, yeah. Right, okay. So they, oh. they still see it as being this thing about going, God, it was really crass. And I was like, well, it's only crass if you sort of go, if you Ugh. Don't, yeah, Ugh. It's only crass if you have a problem with like, trans yeah. people or something. Uh, Dusty Rhodes said, look, <laughs> he don't look like he's supposed to look, but he's got a hard left hand, and if he's got a hard left hand, he's got to be a man. He took the he took a little bit of the flamboyancy, just a little bit over the line. They say I'm a bad man. He called PM News a big old ugly bear. I know one thing is for certain that he don't look like it's supposed to look, but he's got a hard left hand, and if he's got a hard left hand, he gotta be a man. Again, Jesus Christ. Again, again, Dusty, you fucking came up with this, right? You, go, you came up with this. This is your and idea. You, don't give him the gimmick and then just go. Well, you know, it don't look like it's supposed to look, but uh, <laughs> so you you're don't probably look all right. Like you're supposed yeah, to I look. look like you told me. To look. You look, you look and like you wore for most of your career a weird <laughs> black and yellow polka dot I, I love, mumu. I love Dusty. And you, and he you looks never like, look like you slept. He looks like a haunted pig, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love him, but to, for him to be so, he don't look like he's supposed to look. What does a real man look like, Dusty? <laughs> he looks like a sad of bacon that has not slept <laughs> and that is wearing a weebles costume, you know? Well, <laughs> yeah, look like uh, a man wearing chaps because I, 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 I bought, a lot, bought a lot of chaps recently. And Marrow does this so well. 
hell. Yeah. And it's the first new gimmick, and I think it's the only new gimmick we see in this entire thing, where you go, this guy gets what this is. Hey. And he's actually made it better. Hey. Oz is coming up, you <laughs> fucker. How the, dare you? What this is interesting about is Johnny B. Bad <laughs> was the one gimmick that Vince McMahon said he wished he'd come up with. Really? So it's an internal thing. He's not gone on record as saying it. But when they brought Mark Merrow over to the WWE, it was as things were heating up in the wrestling wars. And he was one of the first performers to get a guaranteed contract. When they brought him over, they couldn't use the Johnny B. Bad gimmick. So they brought him over. It's such a good look. He looks just like him. Yeah. Well, they brought him over with a guaranteed contract. And then they were like, we don't know what to do with him. He's now Mm. just a bloke. Yeah. So they made him marvellous Mark Merrow and they played up the fact he was a Golden Gloves boxing champion. And it just, they did not not have that gimmick right um look hey this next match i was really excited about tv champion arn anderson versus beautiful bobby eaton <laughs> two of the great tag team wrestlers of the nwa in the 80s two good solid performers two mm. men really respected this match didn't quite work for me no i guess it's um it's it's a bit of a calm down before. yeah it's a difficult act nice following that smooth. last one nice and smooth yeah. get it done get out of there and there's some ww stuff as well this is the moment where the mic packs up <laughs> and so gary michael capetta does his intro to bobby eaton yeah and it's just you know batteries a, haven't been replaced exactly distant yeah. mouse yeah. talking bobby eaton to the ring mm. and bobby eaton is a shy man i think <laughs> he's not a very big garrulous man when he's outside the ring yeah so on the way when he's walking in you've got this uh, intro that no one can hear he's just staring at the floor and it just looks like no one wants to be there. Let's go back up to Gary Capetta. It's a really simple story. Simple stories work really well in wrestling. And this simple story is, can one of the best tag team wrestlers of his era prove himself as a singles competitor? Mm. That's all it is. Everything he's doing is fighting against this basic thing of going, you're a great tag team performer. This is different. Mm. You'll never be a great singles star. And he's going up against Arn Anderson, one of the great tag team wrestlers, but also an established single solo performer. Anderson looks brilliant coming into this. He's really he's really pro wrestlery. He bounces <laughs> when he's opposite Eaton and he's you know pulling the ropes, checking the mm. pre tensile strength. Yes, you know I love it, and he looks all business. Mm. Uh, Bobby Eaton, amazing mullet as well, shaved at the sides, mullet, yeah. but not totally down to the bone. Just left a bit fluffy at the sides, fluffier on top. <laughs> Long and fluffy at the back. Well, there's like a moment where um, it sort of switches to the crowd and the, all of the people who were chatting for Bobby all look like Gorilla Monsoon. In the, <laughs> they're young men, but they're all wearing Gorilla Monsoon thick kind of aviators. <laughs> Bobby Eaton always a very much a wrestler's wrestler. Right. And I think a smart wrestling fan's right. you know, wrestler. Okay, for yeah. years, Wrestling Observer, Bobby Eaton was always named the most uh, <laughs> underappreciated wrestler in the business. <laughs> Bobby Eaton, he <laughs> The most mullety duckling looking <laughs> wrestler of the business uh, look it's a good it's a good match but what it relies on really this is an old style of nwa performance mm. where one person the, the heel is working on a an injured part of the body of the good guy yeah and the good guy spends ages trying to weather the storm in mm. the hope that he will be able to mount a comeback even though he's so badly injured mm. and those matches take a while to get going this does get going live watching it i was like i'm i'm not quite feeling this yeah and i think it's because it feels like a little bit of an anachronistic throwback that I'm, I'm sort of almost not watching it and going is it objectively a good match i'm thinking i bet all the execs were watching it just going well this stuff has got to go this is got to no this has got to change this is the stuff that's <laughs> landed us in the can yeah, I'm watching. they do do a lovely end to this though so eaton i like eaton as well because he sweats he really sweats <laughs> and so when you glance away and you look back and you, you just go fuck he's fighting he's for his life even, you know he's just suddenly really really hot you know <laughs> is that pain sweat is that like he's just so <laughs> much right. Pain, he's got sweat. Like his body's malfunctioning a bit and just going, I don't know what it is. It might be too much heat. Sweat, sweat, sweat. No, it's still here, the pain in my ankle. Um, they have a really clever end bit, which is Barry Windham, as Bobby Eaton goes up to do his Alabama jam against all the odds. In runs uh, on Anderson's horse mate, Buddy. 
about to push Bobby Eaton off the turnbuckle <laughs> and Brian Pillman stops him. Mm. And Bobby Eaton gets to do his finishing move and he pins Arn Anderson. Annoyingly, on the first bit when they have it, the referee counts one, two, and someone says, cut to see what Wyndham's doing. And Wyndham is just running away. Right. And so the three, they miss. You miss, yeah. You do see it in the replay. Right. And Bobby Eaton is absolutely fucking brilliant when he gets the three count. <laughs> because by the time the referee is about to count three... Eaton is already getting off because he's so excited Happy. to have done it. And he runs to the side of the ring and he's just screaming, you know. <laughs> and the crowd fucking explode. It's a title shot, but it's also... I think it's it's a lot of things. They didn't think that Eaton was necessarily going to win, but they wanted him to. Mm. It was a nice end to that arc of Bobby Eaton's story. But most importantly, they thought they were going to see a match ruined by interference. Yeah. And then it would never end. And what they happens didn't. is they didn't they, they interfered with the interference. Yes. And so they got a clean finish and they were just fucking happy. <laughs> they were like, oh, great. You know, it was, wrestling it was just match happens. A wrestling People match happened happy. on a wrestling show. Yeah. You know, it and, also tells you slightly about how this audience were the worst audience possible for this show that was full of introducing new WWF characters. Yeah. The one match they really enjoyed was Bobby Eaton versus Arn Anderson. Being smooth. The other it's 12 matches, wrestling. they did not have any time to for. Be- Bobby Eaton's title run, by the way, uh, after all this, it doesn't last very long. They right. have him lose it the next month to uh, Steve Austin. Uh, stunning Steve. Uh. Um, that looks like very good booking from an early age, doesn't it? Where you're just like, this guy's come in, let's give him the title immediately. Yeah. Um, he will be big. Um, 